the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. In those primitive societies where a strong central government has not yet taken shape, or in those where it has decayed, justice, as we know it, is not always easily enforced. When that occurs, people begin taking the law into their own hands, as happened in our country in many places when the United States was a little younger. The frontiers of U.S. history were often characterized by private justice and the blood feud, based on simple vengeance. This land belongs to me. You come on it only if I want you here. That corpse can just lay there and rot. But, Pa, you can't do that. Who says I can't? It can lay there and be dinner for the vultures. But if anyone is foolish enough to dare lay a finger on that dead body, for any reason, they'll pay for it in blood. Do I make myself clear? Our mystery drama, The Way to Dusty Death, was adapted from Sophocles' great Greek tragedy, Antigone. It was especially adapted for the Mystery Theater by Stella and Arnold Moss. It stars Arnold Moss and Marion Seldes. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. between the states has been over for more than ten years. But in the mountainous terrain of Thebes County along the rugged Kentucky-West Virginia border, there is still no peace. For years, two families, the Carpenters and the Webbs, have been taking the law into their own hands in the deadly feud that has robbed each side of its share of sons. It is a warm summer night. Paul Carpenter and his younger sister Isabel are stealthily making their way across the fast-running mountain brook that separates their land from that of the web. I tell you, Paul, that coat is on the other side. I know it. And Amanda knows it. You two girls have got a feeling in your bones, is that it? You don't believe us? Of course I do, Isabel. Else, why would I be wandering over to the land that belongs to the Webb family in the dark of night? hoping to find a little colt of ours that's been missing since last Thursday. I believe you. I believe our sister, too. Ain't often that Amanda's wrong. And what's more, I'm sure I know just how it got there. You mean the little colt somehow crossed the mountain brook all by itself? And after it crossed, somebody kept it. I don't put it past them. What's deep into a pack of murderers? If Captain Webb could put a rifle bullet to our father's head with no good cause. Except in hate for all our carpenters. Shh, shh, shh. Quiet. We're almost on the other side. Almost on their land. Keep your voice down real low. And here we are on enemy territory. Oh, Amanda will be pleased by what we've done. Just watch your step. The stable where the coat would be is, is over toward that way. Stay close behind me. I'm following you, Paul. This is what Papa would have done if he was still alive. I reckon so. Over there. There's the bar. Lucky we got a moon. Oh, we'll get that coat in no time at all. And then we'll make a run for it. Over the brook and home. I can just see Captain Crane Webb's red old face when he looks into the stable in the morning and finds... Oh, we got to get out of here. But fast, Paul. Fast. I can't get up. Oh, Pa. I can't see. Oh, no. The blood is pouring in my eyes. Oh, Pa. You go, Isabel. You no. go quick. Run. No, no, I can't leave you. you got to, Pa. Oh, they'll get you, too. Over this way, Harmon. Follow me. Right with you, Pa. They're coming. Please go, Isabel. Hey, don't you worry, Pa. Amanda and I, we'll be back uh, real soon to get you. Just take your time, sister. I think... There'll be lots of time. This way, boy. Over 
over here, Harmon. Who is it, Pa? Who is it? Yeah, I got one of them anyway. I haven't completely lost the skill I was known for in the war. Right through the head. The other one? Got away. Wait a minute, Pa. Look who it is. Yeah, I know who it is, Harmon. It's a carpenter boy. Paul oh, Carpenter. Yeah, I know. I knowed it all along, son. He's dead. You killed him, Pa. He was trespassing on my land. And I was hoping that one of these days... You was hoping what? Well, it ain't important, Pa. Uh, what do you think you're up to, Harmon? Well, you ain't gonna let his body lay here on the ground, are you? The carpenter fell here on my property... He's dead. And he's going to stay where he fell. Now, you put that body down. But, Pa... I don't want to say it twice, boy. That's better. Now, you started to say that you was, uh, hoping something. I thought maybe all this bad blood between our two families might someday soon be coming to an end. Why is that? Well, I... well I've got reasons. Now I'm afraid that things are going to take a turn for the worse. Let's get back into the house before your ma begins to worry. Things are going to start happening all over again. Well, then you just let them start, son. Because whatever the carpenters begin, you can be sure we webs will finish. You stop that crying again. I said, stop it. Now, we weren't doing any harm, Amanda. Just trying to get back what Riley was ours. A little brown coat they stole from us. I my... know, I know, Isabel. And now our brother's dead. They killed him. Just like they killed our pa. Was Harmon with the captain when the shot was fired? Uh, I, I guess so. But you ain't sure. I ran away so quick I couldn't swear Harmon was with him. But I think I heard his voice. Now Paul's dead. Oh, we were foolish to do what we did. You've got to pull yourself together, girl. Oh, what's wrong with you, Amanda? You've got no feelings. You're acting just as hard as stone. Listen to me, Isabel. Now, listen close. <laughs> Paul's dead. We cannot bring him back. I thought that Harmon and me, that we'd be the thing that would bring our two families together. Once and for all, wipe out the hatred that's been poisoning both our sides since before we was ever born. You do love each other, Harmon and you. Well, no one knows that. Except you and me and Harmon. Now, not only is that not to be, but the carpenters and the web will go on spilling each other's blood till there ain't no more to spill. Ain't we already got there, Amanda? With Paul's death? No, not quite. In this house of ours, there's still two of us. Two girls. Two almost helpless girls. Helpless, Isabel? I can shoot a rifle as well as any man in this county. You know that. And I'm now head of this family. The honor of this family rests in my hands. We got lots of men who are kinfolk. Men who'd stop at nothing to get back at the webs for our brother Paul's death. Well, this is one matter I want to handle by myself. With your help. You think you can? I'm sure I can. Now, right now, our job is plain. At sunup, as soon as it gets light, we got to carry back our dead brother's body so as we can give him a respectful burial. Now we better get some rest. Oh, Amanda, couldn't possibly carry Paul's body? Is the two of us? Well, I think I know where maybe we'll get some help. Where? And never you mind. Well, suppose we don't. Then we'll do it by ourselves, Isabel. The best we can. <laughs> Amanda, real scared. After last night, I... Keep walking straight ahead toward their front door, Isabel. And hold your head up high. That's it. Well, supposing Captain Crane had it in his head to take a shot at us, the way he did at Paul last night. In the broad daylight, right out in the open. He hates Amanda. We're carpenters. I know what I'm doing. He has to listen to me. Don't take another step. Neither one of you. You can put down your rifle, Captain. We mean no harm. What do you two want? I think you know. We want our brother's body. 
Let us take him. Quiet. You say nothing. Well? We are here to get Paul's body. To take him off your land and give him a decent burial. And where would that be? Where he belongs. Six feet under carpenter soil, is that it? Yes, Captain. That's it. You are out of your mind, girl. What is that supposed to mean? Now, just turn around, the two of you, and take yourself straight back to where you come from. Oh, please, Captain Crane. We are not about to do that. We want our brother's body, and we are here to get it, with your permission or without it. Your brother had no respect for private property. He'd come onto my land, web land, uninvited, and so he can stay there. But he's got to be buried. You can't just let him lay there. Why must he be buried? And who's going to make that happen? You two girls? Or your kinfolk up near Sandy River? You think maybe they'll try to snatch a dead body off in my land? Times are changing, Captain. There is such a thing as the law. And law is beginning to come here to the mountains. Through the great power of old Judge Calvin, I suppose. Judge Calvin, yes. And others. On my land, there is only one law. And that's the law of Crane Webb. It's always been that way, and no one, no one is going to change it. If nothing else, I think that common decency would make... Decency? A carpenter talking of decency? The only decency I know is in the speed of my trigger finger. For over 50 years, it's been you kill or you get killed. A Webb or a carpenter. We're getting pretty close to the end of the line, girl, so if you'll just do a smart about face. Where you been, Harmon? Inside the door. I've been hearing everything that's been said. Here. Take my rifle, son. Get these two carpenters off in our land. Real quick. I'm not sure I can do that, Pa. Why not? Let the girls give their brother a proper Christian burial. And put an end to all the bad blood that's rankled our two families all these years, hmm? Why not? It's no more than you would ask if it was me laying out there. I'll tell you why not. And you two girls had better listen, too. I mean for that body out there to be a warning to everyone that this land belongs to me. You come on it only if I want you there. That corpse can just lay there and rot. The pa, you can't... It can lay there and be dinner for the vultures. And if anyone, you hear that, anyone is foolish enough to dare lay a finger on that body for any reason, they'll pay for it in blood. Do I make myself clear? The ancient Greeks had a word for it. They called it hubris, meaning excessive pride, insolent, overbearing arrogance. The one sin of man the ancient gods would not tolerate. And Captain Crane Webb is such a man. A man weighted down with pride, false pride, with hubris. How will the fates deal with his stiff-necked unwillingness to bend? Join me shortly in Act Two. Back in the 1870s, in Thebes County, somewhere along the mountainous border between Kentucky and West Virginia, where family feuding is a way of life, Crane Webb, a man who considers himself a law unto himself, has shot and killed Paul Carpenter for trespassing on his land and refuses to let the body be taken off his property or to be buried. Confronted by the two young sisters of the dead man and by his own son, Crane says. Now, Harmon, who sees to it that these two carpenter girls get back on their own side of the brook? You or I? We don't need any company, Captain Crane. We can find our own way back. I ain't asking you. They're girls, Pa. Ain't the same as if they were men. A carpenter's a carpenter, son. I see them back myself. No, give me a gun, Pa. I'll do it. On your way, Harmon, and keep them covered. I don't trust no carpenter. They're women no more than they're men. Get moving, both of you. We are going. We ain't afraid of you, Captain Crane. And we ain't afraid of Harmon either. You better hush up, Isabel. And keep on moving. Fast. Oh, stop poking me with that gun. I'll be waiting for you, son. 
Put down your gun, Harmon. What has got into you? You just keep walking, Amanda. I'm keeping you covered till you're in your own meadow. Real scared of your pa, ain't you? He shakes a finger at you, you jump like a puppy through a hoop. I'd appreciate you walking a little faster. You hear what I hear, Amanda? I know that sound. It's a little cold. And look, there he is. Tied to that tree over there. It's Juniper. He knows our voices. We mean to get our coat, Harmon. I'm not discussing coats. You keep going. Across the brook and on your own place. Please, Amanda, I know what I'm doing. Just wait till we're out of my father's sight. Trust me. Please. But Juniper belongs to us. Never mind Juniper for the time being. Harmon. What are we going to do? I'm not sure. We're counting on you. I know you are. Because if for any reason we can't, we're far from helpless, Isabel and I. I know that, too. No, no, no. No, don't come over to our side. Stay where you are. I'm sure he's still watching. Why don't you just turn around and walk slowly back to your own place? I have to talk to you. This is not the time. But tonight, after dark... I'll be waiting. You're sure he doesn't know where you are? I just said I was going out for a breath of air. Now, Harmon, just listen to me. Your father has lived all these years making his own laws. Fitting your life, your mother's, everybody's, to however it pleased him. Yeah, we all know he's not an easy man. But whether he goes along with it or not, that's all about to end. There is such a thing as the law. There is such a thing as right and wrong. What are you getting at, Amanda? The law goes for everybody, including your father. And he has to know that no one, not even he, is above it. And that means the law of Thebes County. You're not thinking of bringing old Judge Calvin into this, are you? Why not? Well, the captain wouldn't pay him no mind, you know that. He'd just laugh at the old judge. Well, that remains to be seen. Now, you just go on back home. Fast. Whatever you do, don't forget, my father is a very dangerous man. I can't tell you how sorry I was to hear about Paul. Thank you, Judge Calvin. Uh, can I offer you a cold lemonade, Amanda? Oh, no, thank you. Real hot day. Long walk from the carpenter place all the way here to town. No, I'm fine. Uh, what uh, exactly was on your mind? Uh, how can an old servant of the people be of help? Judge Calvin, my father used to say that no man in the whole county, whether they agreed with you or not, could look at things as fair as you. <laughs> That's a real compliment. And that everyone had respect for your honesty. For your good judgment. Well, uh, what are you leading up to, Amanda? I need your help with the law. What for? Uh, uh, to, do, to do what? To get Paul's body back from Crane Webb's land. So as Isabel and I can see he gets a decent burial. Uh, as I understand it, uh, Paul was trespassing on Webb property. But trespassing or not, the fact is, Paul is dead. How he was killed and what led up to his death is not the question. What is important is he can't be left lying out there in the hot sun, unburied, with the birds waiting to pick out his eyes. Well, what is it you'd like me to do? I want my brother's body. I want you to give me the legal right to go in there and take it. Right away. A, a paper of some kind with your signature on it that says that I can do it. I've known Crane Webb since he was a boy, uh, 50 years more. He never learned respect for anything that he considered weak. And to him, I'm weak, because I'm a girl, is that it? He'll never change. All right, then where does the law come in? Well, that's hard to say, especially here in the mountains. I, uh, I could serve a piece of legal paper on the captain, and he'd just tear it up. And then what would I do? Force him some way to let us take possession of our brother's body. Force Crane Webb to do anything? I know I'm much too well for that, Amanda. Besides, the bitter truth is that any judge, any keeper of the peace who dares to raise a gavel against a man like Crane 
He do it at the risk of his own life. I see. I may not have too many years ahead of me, my girl, but those I have, I cherish. You're afraid of him. Is that it? Well, I, I know the history of this county. Your father and now your brother are sad proof of it. And you won't lift a finger to change that, will you? A man who's supposed to deal out justice, who claims to have been my father's friend. Judge Calvin, you make me want to be sick. You're a tired, scared old man. No, 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 just a minute, I just Amanda don't Collins. want to waste any more time with you. Now, don't make trouble, girl. There's been enough. My sister and I will find a way to do what we think is right. Well, those were the words I heard your father speak. It cost him his life. It won't cost me mine. I'll do what has to be done. With or without the help of what you call the law. Oh, don't bother. I know where the door is. Well, I'll try. I'll try to make him change his mind. But, Harmon, you know your pa. His will is iron. Yeah, it don't make sense, though, Ma. Well, just to him, Harmon. To him, that's all that counts. Now, I beg you to stay away from Paul's dead body. Don't you so much as touch it. There's something... It's time I told you, Ma. Hmm? What's that? Paul Carpenter was my good friend. I'm glad the captain never knew. And that's not all. Amanda and I, we love each other. We've been hoping to get married. Married? To a carpenter? You're out of your mind. Your pa would kill you first. If I don't help her move Paul's body onto their own land, she'll never speak to me again. Never. How could you dare disobey your father? How could I dare think of not helping the girl I love? Your father says there is no greater wrong than betraying your own flesh and blood. Harmon, my son, don't let your feeling for this girl turn you against your own kin. I beg you. What would you have me do? Try to do what you're told. Even if it means choking this carpenter girl out of your heart. You've got to try to do just that. I don't want to hurt no one. Not you, not Pa, and not Amanda. It's your choice, Harmon. But whatever you decide, remember, I couldn't bear to lose another son. Try once more, Isabel. Come on now, pull. With me. Together. Uh, I'm doing the best I can, Amanda. Uh, oh, Paul is so heavy. We can barely budge him. Come on, now keep trying. Uh, we'll uh, never get uh, him out of here. Uh, oh, whatever happened to Harmon? Why didn't he come to help us? I have no idea. Huh? I am not waiting for him. Uh, for who? Judge Calvin, either or uh, anyone. Uh, well, there's one thing we can do, just the two of us. What's that? We could dig a shallow grave. Oh. Right here. Oh, well. And then we'll throw some earth over Paul's dead body. And... Oh, Matt. No, that way we'll be to try to give him something like a decent burial. Come on, hand me the shovel. Here. Uh, hold that ladder a little higher. Oh. Oh, Amanda, how awful he looks. Uh, oh, dear, beautiful Paul. You can go home if you want to, uh, you know. I can handle this alone. No, it's a minute. I think there's someone coming. Don't move. Amanda, darling. Isabel. Oh, we thought you weren't coming. What are you two doing? We're burying Pa. Here? Why not? Well, if my Pa catches you. We have the right to take care of our brother. Once we've given him a show of burial, a, a token, we'll have done part of our duty to him. Give me the shovel. Thank you, Harmon. Well, what do we do after that? We'll cross that next bridge when we come to it. A, a little deeper, Harmon. Uh, All right, then. Now, that'll be fine. Let me try to move him over here. Uh, uh, All right, now. Yeah. If I can remember the words, let's see. I sprinkle a handful of earth over him. Then I say, 
earth to earth. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Amen. 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 And may he rest in peace. What's going on out there? Answer me, somebody. It's my paw. What about that man, Isabel? Don't move, either of you. No. You two go. I'll take care of my father best I can. Oh, be careful, Harvard. Go. Just go. I love you, Harvard. And I love you. Now, run. Is that you, Paul? Well, who else should it be? What are you doing out here this time of night? Who else? Uh, too hot to sleep. What are you trying to hide? What do you got there behind your back? Nothing. What is it? This just a shovel. Let me have it, Harmon. Oh, you might as well know now, Pa. Paul's body has been buried. By who? The girls and me. You? The ritual of burying's been done. The earth is scattered on Paul's flesh. The prayer's been said. And you? My son? You had a hand in this? Yes, I did. You call yourself my son. Oh, Paul, you hit me. You brought shame to the name of Webb. I did what any decent human would. You just scrape off the earth that sits on that dead body. Right now. It stays unburied. I, I can't do that, Paul. You'll do what you are told. I can't. I just can't. So what's that supposed to mean? It means I can't. It means I won't. Crane Webb thinks of himself as a man with a will of steel, which cannot, must not be denied. But as the poet John Milton wrote, what is strength without a double share of wisdom? Vast, unwieldy, burdensome, proudly secure, yet liable to fall by weakest subtleties. Captain Webb continues to stand up against the resistance he is meeting from all sides, even from his own son. I shall return shortly with Act Three. A vendetta, we are told, is the right or obligation a person assumes to be his in retaliation for a wrong, often a murder he thinks has been done to a member of his family or group. Vendettas go back to the most primitive times and even find their place in great literature. In Hamlet, for example, where the young prince seeks vengeance for his father's murder. In our story, it's the feud between the Webbs and the Carpenters. Captain Crane Webb speaks to his son, Harmon, who he thinks has betrayed him. Harmon, you brought shame to the name of Webb. I only did what any decent human would. Scrape off the earth that sits on that dead body. I can't do that, Pa. You'll do what you are told. I can't, Pa. And I won't. You won't? No, Pa. I won't. I reckon you thought you were too big, maybe too old to be whipped. Don't try it again, Pa. I warn you. Let me tell you something, boy. A man prays he may beget a household full of dutiful sons who share with him the punishing of enemies, the honoring of his father's friend. I won't listen to this. Oh, yes, you will, boy. The man who breeds a young one that won't stand by him has done nothing but sow trouble for himself. His enemies laugh at him. Why, when I was your oh, age... Oh, not again, Pa, please. I had respect for my Pa. The greatest respect. Maybe he earned it. Harmon, um, maybe you'd just better go into the house and help your mother. Roseanne's doing some mending. Maybe you can help her thread the needles. But first, give me that shovel. Hand it to me, I said. Give me that shovel. Pick up that shovel. Pick it up yourself, Paul. I'm going to bed. Very well. I'll uncover the corpse myself. A 
Crane. Go easy on the boy. Harmon is so young. I won't be disobeyed, Roseanne. Not in my own house. He means no one, no harm. Disobedience to authority is what ruins a country. He tears down our home. This is your own son, Crane. All the more reason. Another thing. I will not let myself be beaten by a girl. Any girl. If the way I live is to be threatened, let it be by a man, not by some girl. You're sick. You're sick with hate. I will not listen to this. You don't really know why you hate. And it's your hate and it'll destroy all of us in the end. You should be sharing that hatred with me. I cannot share in hatred, but in love. Good night, Rose. One last thing. Harmon's my only son. Your only son. And there are more carpenters than just them two girls. If anything happens to those girls, it'll be the end of Harmon, too. Nothing will happen to Harmon. I'll see to it. How can you be so sure? I've done all I can, Amanda. My father's like a rock that no amount of prying can move out of the earth. And if the rock goes on, refuse to be moved? Well, then you and I'll have to find our way around it. Oh, we can't depend on old Judge Calvin. My trip to him was just a waste of time. Maybe if I would go and talk to him... No, Harmon, I don't want you getting in any deeper than this, and you really are already. There's just no telling what your father might do. I wouldn't care. Well, I do. For your sake. And for ours. Let me kiss you, man. No, Harmon. Don't. Right at this moment, I don't feel at home either with you, the living, or with Paul, the dead. Forgive me, Harmon. I, I need to be alone. There's things I gotta figure out where no one can help me. Can we offer you something to drink, Judge Calvin? No, no, thank you, Crean. I apologize for dropping in on you after dark. Perfectly all right. Uh, Roseanne, turn up the lamp a bit. And then leave the judge and me together. Yes, Craig. Now then, to what do I owe the honor of your visit, Judge Calvin? Your next-door neighbor, Amanda Carpenter, uh, paid me a call. How very friendly of her. Uh, at her request, uh, I have here an order of the court. For what, if I might ask? Uh, I don't want you to take offense, Crane. It's uh, to allow removal of her brother Paul's dead body off your property uh, so he can receive a proper burial. That's it? it, it just about. Put it over on the table there, won't you, Judge? Glad to. You will respect this order. I hope it's a law. And if I don't? It'd be easier for all of us if you did, Crane. Well, I'll look it over. Maybe tomorrow morning. If I can spare the time. I'm a very busy man, too, you know. It's a law, Captain. So you said. You know something, Judge? On second thought, I will take that piece of paper. You're a reasonable man, Crane. I knew I could count on you. Hey, what, what are you doing? There's your court order. Your Honor. And now I would appreciate your getting out of my house just as fast as your old legs will carry you. You, you can't defy the law forever, Crane. I can't? Who says I can't? Uh, good night, Crane. Oh, uh, wait just one minute, Judge. There's someone sneaking around down there near the stable. What are you doing with that rifle? Please let me get by, Your Honor. Are you out of your mind? Don't you worry. I'll take care of everything. Crane, put down that rifle. I'll take care of them good. Once and for all. Got to be very quiet, Amanda. I know. Judge Calvin's up there talking with him and with Mama. We got to be quiet. And quick. Oh, you're wonderful, Harmon, to be doing this. Don't let's talk. I'll just try to heist Paul's body over my shoulder. Then carry him to the stream. In no time at all, he'll be back where you want him. Uh, oh, he is heavy. Can I do anything? When I grab him here, you get your hands under his head. That'll help. Oh, Harmon. I love you so. And I love you. 
What happened? What was that? I've been shot. Here, in the neck. Oh, my poor darling. Oh, be careful. Your father, he's shooting from the house. That's the last shot he'll ever fire on this earth. What are you doing? Paying back my father. This time, he's more than asked for it. Put down your gun, Harmon. It'll do no good. We'll see. I want you to die, Pa. I want you dead. That's one of them. Can't say they didn't get fair warning. Crane, you'll hang for this. Maybe, maybe not. You! Well, what do you know? They're shooting back at you. Not bad aim, either. That one nearly got me. Oh, we're just going to have to stop this foolishness. Like this. Crane, do you realize what you're doing? I think I do. Those are them cop and the girls, both of them. And I reckon I got them both. Judge Calvin, Roseanne, come on down with me and take a look at the prize. Bring your lamp more over this way, Roseanne. Yes, Crane. I'll go a little ahead. Light the way. I hope you know what you're doing. You are about to see, Judge Calvin, what I call justice. I'm afraid so. Uh, watch out for that big rock there, Judge. No! No! It just can't be! What is it, Roseanne? I thought all this killing might be ended. All this bloodshed. What are you talking about? There's, there's your pride. Take a good look. It's the carpenter girl, the older one. Amanda, she's dead, Crane, by your hand. And Harmon, your son Harmon, he's dead too. And he's holding her in his arms. You killed your own son. Murderer. You stubborn, self-righteous murderer. Easy, easy Roseanne, easy. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I, I thought that Harmon was... You never thought... Not one. You never had a decent thought in your head. Oh, why were they here together? His, his arms around her. That's something else you didn't know. They loved each other. They were going to get married. It was their hope that all these years of feuding might be ended by their marriage. You must try to control yourself, Roseanne. You can be real proud of yourself, Craig. The great Captain Webb. Maker of corpses. Wife. I ask you to forgive me, if you can. I'm a killer. I look on the son I killed. I look on his bride that shall never be. They both have died too soon. And by my hand, cursed be the hand that did this. Cursed be the day that ever I was born. Why don't you both go back into the house? I'll ride my horse to town and see that what must be done will be done. I just can't stay here. Oh, my son. My son. Let me take my son up in my arms. Oh, and I... I didn't mean what I did. I loved you, Harm, and my son. And now you are no more, nor will ever breathe again. Melford, Melford, Melford. You up there, come down and strike me. Kill me with your cotton sword. Easy, Crane. I am soaked to the bone with grief and sorrow. Let my death come quick, bring in my final day. Oh, let me never see tomorrow's sunrise. We better see where Roseanne has gone to. She shouldn't be alone. And maybe you better go to her and comfort her. I don't think she can bear the sight of me. Captain Crane! Captain Crane, where are you? Here. Right here. Who is that? It's me, Isabel. Isabel Carpenter, Amanda's sister. What's happened? Your sister's dead. Oh, no. No! And so is Harmon. <gasps> both killed by the same hand. Oh, I, I came to look for them. They were gone so long. And on my way past your bar, Captain 
Crane. Yes? What is it, Isabel? I saw Mrs. Crane in the barn. The door was open. I saw her. She... Yes? She... She was there, swinging from one of the rafters. A thick rope around her neck. Two wet. Two carpenters. Both sides lost, Isabel. <laughs> and nobody won. Nobody. Our happiness depends on wisdom all the way. The gods must have their due. Great words by men of pride bring greater blows upon them. So, wisdom comes to the old. With those words, Sophocles ends his tragedy of Antigone. I'll be back shortly. The Antigone of Sophocles has been updated many times. In many places since its premiere nearly 2,400 years ago in ancient Athens. A contemporary French playwright, for example, presents Antigone as a doomed young woman without hope, and Creon, her antagonist, as a wily political figure, both of them very French. We trust you've accepted Amanda Carpenter, Antigone, and Captain Crane Webb, Creon, as suitable American counterparts. Our cast included Arnold Moss, Marion Seldes, E.V. Juster, Don Scardino, and Gilbert Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. It's simple. You grow a beard, we dye dark for you, all for your hair. Add colored contact lenses to make your eyes brown. You and Carol book a 30-day and advance one-week excursion cruise. You get into Regaria, we make the contact for you, you turn over your passport, and who James Otescu uses them as his passports to freedom. Hey, hey, now wait a minute. How come Carol, too? He has a wife to bring out. Who looks like Carol? You know, chance we got to take. Well, how about our chances? How do we get out? No problem. Uh, famous last night. No, 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 no. You shave off your beard, wash out the dye, take out the contact lenses... And come back on a passport of your own that we issue, complete with entry visa. Yeah, what if something goes wrong? The chances we take, that's our business. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.